Welcome to this QLTS School video tutorial on double entry accounting. We will take you through an introduction to and basic overview of the principles of double entry accounting. Accounts are summaries of information relating to the financial affairs of a business. They are used to help keep track of business activity, profitability and its overall financial health. Accounts for taxation, reporting or other purposes are often prepared on the basis of a company's accounts. It is therefore essential that efficient and accurate accounts are kept. Double entry accounting is a set of rules governing the way in which accounts are recorded. It operates on the basis that each transaction has two corresponding entries in the business's accounts, one debit or left column and one credit or right column. A series of ledger accounts record the company's transactions and each credit and debit entry are made in the appropriate ledger account for each transaction. Because each credit and debit entry for a transaction offset each other, when properly kept, accounts will have equal credit and debit balances when added together, giving rise to the phrase balancing the books. This is an example of a blank ledger account. You will see that it is broken into rows and columns. Each row is a separate transaction, and the columns contain the relevant information about that transaction, so as to identify the date of the transaction, its nature, the parties involved, and the appropriate debit or credit entries to the value of the transaction. A running balance of each account ledger is kept, updated after each transaction. It is important to note that debit and credit simply mean left and right. An increase or decrease of the balance of an account can be marked either as a debit or a credit, depending on the type of account that is affected. We will discuss this in more detail later. Also note that where an account ledger has a debit or credit entry for a transaction, the corresponding entry will always be in a different ledger account. Many people get confused when they initially study accounts. This is because we are used to accounts in the context of our bank statements, where a debit is money taken from our account and a credit is money put into our account. But as previously discussed, every transaction has a credit and debit entry. This means that where your account is debited or credited, another account somewhere else has a corresponding debit or credit entry. Remember that your bank statement is a ledger account prepared by the bank. All ledger accounts are prepared from the business's point of view. So here we see the other ledger account containing the opposite set of entries to those in the bank statement we just saw. And please note that this is a simplified version for the purposes of this video tutorial. Your bank statement is simply a ledger account showing the bank's liabilities to you or money that the bank owes to you. The other set of debit or credit entries that offset the entries in your bank statement relate to the ledger account held for the bank's cash account. Remember that without accounts we would be unable to accurately record where money has come from and to whom it belongs. A bank's cash account will contain large amounts of money from many customers. All of this money and the payments in and out of the cash account are recorded in this ledger account. Cash is considered an asset of the business. So as you can see, double entry accounting helps keep a record of payments in and out of a cash account and who that money belongs to. It is important therefore that entries are properly recorded so as to be easily identified. When money is paid into the bank by you or someone else for you, the bank is increasing its liabilities because it is receiving cash. When money is paid into the bank by you or someone else for you, the bank is increasing its assets because it is receiving cash, but also its liabilities because that money is owed to you by the bank. For an asset ledger account, in this case the money held by the bank or its cash account, an increase is a debit and a decrease is a credit. The corresponding entries for the liability account, i.e. the ledger account in your name, 
are a credit for an increase and a debit for a decrease. So you can now see how your bank statement fits within the wider picture of accounts. Your statement is not how much cash you have in the bank, but how much cash the bank owes you. So when you make a withdrawal or payment, the liability of the bank to you for that amount decreases, hence the debit that appears in your bank account statement. For solicitors' accounts, how do you decide when to debit or credit a ledger account? You should ask yourself these four questions. Whose money is involved, office money or client money? Is it a receipt or a payment of money? Whose ledger is credited or debited, the client's or the office's? And which accounts are credited or debited? When identifying which accounts to credit or debit, you need to identify whether a transaction involves additions or reductions to an asset, liability, income, expense, or equity slash capital account. This table, also in your textbook, will help you work out which ledger accounts require the appropriate entries in any given transaction. Examples of an asset account include cash, receivables, inventory, land, plant and equipment, vehicles, patents and trademarks, goodwill, prepaid expenses and debtors. Examples of a liability ledger account include accounts payable, income tax, bank overdrafts, trust accounts, accrued expenses, sales taxes, accrued interest on loans. Examples of income ledger accounts include services rendered, such as professional services in the case of a firm of solicitors, sales, interest income, membership fees, rent income, interest from investment. Examples of expense ledger accounts include telephone, water, electricity bills, repairs, salaries and wages, depreciation, bad debts, stationery, entertainment and rent. Whilst examples of an equity or capital account include capital, drawings, common stock or accumulated funds. Remember that ledger accounts are opened as and when required. They are not rigid prerequisites. The main emphasis is on accuracy and accountability. Don't worry, this will soon start to make sense, but the key is to practice. Remember, each transaction must have one left-hand entry and one right-hand entry. To practice, read accounts of public companies, draw up your own ledgers and try doing some of the examples listed in the textbook, and attempt the MCT questions on the MCT portal. By constantly practicing, you will become familiar with the logic and operation of double entry bookkeeping, and it will become very easy for you. Good luck, thank you for your attention, and if you do have any questions, please get in contact with us via our website at www.qlts.co.uk.